Hello, it's uh, Dr. Clark here. I'm just going to go through some very basic graph plotting in Excel. Here we've got an Excel spreadsheet. I'm using uh, Excel version 2010 on a PC, but it's pretty much the same for most other versions of Excel, especially the ones on the college systems. But here we have a, an example data set. We've got group A, group B, group C, and group D with four replicates, um, showing the raw data here to one decimal place. And we've got the option here, we're going to add a mean and a standard deviation in, in, a, in order to plot a graph. What we're trying to do is plot a, a, gra a bar graph of, of these data to look something like this. This is using GraphPad Prism, which is a specialist publication graph application. So you can see this is the kind of graph that you'd put in a paper um, formatted correctly. Uh, Excel doesn't do this by default, so there's a bit of fiddling you need to do to get your Excel graphs to look uh, something like this. So let's go back to Excel. And we'll start off by putting in our means. Uh, you probably know the formula is average. Highlight the area you want to make an average of. Close the bracket. And you can copy that down through the other groups like that. And you've now got the averages for each of the groups. Standard deviation is very simple. You just do an equals STDEV, which is standard deviation shortcut, with a bracket. Highlight the numbers. And you can copy that down the same. So now we've got the mean and the standard deviation these four data sets. Uh, these data here now, the raw data, we don't need to use to plot graphs. We only need to use the labels and the mean data. So we highlight the labels, press the control key and highlight the mean data. So we've got both sets of cells uh, highlighted. We're going to insert a column graph. And here's the, the default column graph that my version of Excel seems to throw up every time. It's uh, not the prettiest of graphs. It doesn't tell you very much about the data. Um, at least this version of Excel plots it from zero to the, uh, to the maximum. Some versions of Excel seem to just choose random scales, but this seems OK. Um, it's not how I want it. What I want is I want to have some labels on the x and y axis. I don't really need this legend here. There's some lines I don't want, and the colors I certainly don't want to keep. Um, however, Excel does give you up the top here this thing called chart layouts. And you can scroll down here until you see something that looks similar to how you want it. And I'm looking at this one. It's certainly got labels. Uh, so I'll click on this one. It's all gone a bit small, but I've got labels. So I'll, I'm happy with that one. Now I can edit. So the first thing I do is get rid of this legend. I don't need that. So I can get rid of series one. I also want to get rid of these horizontal lines. They look a bit distracting. They're quite nice if you want to compare two bars, but um, uh, they're a little bit annoying to look at. So I'm just going to delete those. So now it's looking more like a, a clean graph. We've now got axis titles, so we can uh, click on our axis title and label this one group, because that's what I've decided to label. And we can label this one as time in seconds. Of course, I've no idea what this data actually is. I've just made up some numbers to, to plot the graph. So uh, here's now our graph. It's looking a little bit more like that. We've now got a data range. We've got 0 to 50 and 0 to 35. I'd rather have 0 to 50, because I know there's going to be this big error bar here. But we'll see what happens when we put the error bars on the graph. So. Uh, Back to Excel. Um, I want to change the colors and I want to make these bars a bit wider. So I can double click on a set of gra graph bars. You can see it's selected all of them. And I can go to series options and decrease the gap width. There we are. So now they're looking a little bit more chunky. Uh, and I can look at their fill. I can look at their border. I look at their border style. Um, I want to make their border one pixel. So I'm going to choose a, a black line, one pixel. It won't let me, if you notice, because I haven't chosen a colour. So I'm going to put solid line and then choose one pixel. Now we have a one pixel black line around our bars. Now I want to change the colour of individual bars. So I click once and that selects all four. Click again and it just selects just the one. And I can double click on him. And I can choose his fill colour, border colour, etc. So his fill is going to be a solid fill. And I'm going to make him white. I can then click on him choose border, style, um, fill. He can be a solid color. I'm going to make that one black to fit with the graph I've already made. Uh, this blue chap I'm going to make solid and make slightly gray. And then finally the last bar I'm going to make solid and a bit darker gray. OK, so now our graph is now looking like a, a scientific graph, but it's lacking the very important variance data we need on here, which is the standard deviation. Um, so let's let's put the standard error bars on, the standard deviation bars. Um, Excel allows you to do this. When you click on your graph, you've got this chart tools. If you click on layout, 
you've got a drop down saying error bars and you're more than welcome to click on this of course and you've got none standard error percentage standard deviation a lot of people will go ah that's what I want standard deviation and click on it and it does that of course this is plotting the standard deviation around the mean of all the data it's not plotting the standard deviation of each of your individual data sets so that's not what you want what you want to do is go to more error bar options and it brings up this dialog box You've got vertical error bars line color line style etc etc shadows and glows let's just ignore shadows and glows because they're really not what you want so we go to vertical error bars we want them going up and down and we want them to have a cap they look like scientific graphs and you can see here it's doing one standard deviation which is completely wrong so we're going to click on custom and it's going to ask us to specify a value so if you click on the specify value it brings up another at the moment it's saying positive error value equals wiggly bracket one we don't want wiggly bracket one we want to put these standard error uh, data that we've already collected both positive and negative so we click on the little go to our thing highlight our standard error and it puts in the highlighted data go out again go to negative error value click on our little thing click on the same standard error and now we've got the same data in both of these click OK close that window and there we have our standard error bars that look very similar to those in our professional package here okay I've made the fonts a little bit bigger in this one and we can do that very quickly in Excel just by clicking increasing the font clicking increasing the font clicking on there and increasing that font too you can see the decimal places here it seems to have given us one decimal place well it's done that because our original data was in one decimal place uh, it's nice not to have that so you can double click on this and of course you can choose now your units I'm going to change this so it goes up to 50 because that's what I want to do um, there are no units and my number is going to be zero decimal places press so close and now I have a graph that looks very similar the graph I have in Excel, I can just move in, in Prism, sorry, I can move that out a bit, and there we have it. So there's our graph in Prism, the, the Pro package, and there's our graph in Excel. Okay, some of the lines are a little bit thinner, a little bit thicker. This hasn't got our little tick label, so we can add them just by clicking on there and choosing that we want vertical axis. Here we are tick marks between tick marks major minor so major outside ah you see what it's done is it's put the tick marks between the data so what we want to try and do is change it to zero there we are this is one of the problems with excel it doesn't like putting tick marks underneath bars it's got this uh, fear of tick marks so actually what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to either turn these off and just leave it as it is, or I'd fiddle, but I suspect leaving it as it is is probably a very safe, um, safe option, so I'm going to leave that as it is. So I'm happy with those data, they look, uh, they look pretty good, um, and I'd be very happy uh, to put this graph in a, in a publication now, certainly much happier than I was with the uh, Microsoft Excel blue version. So I hope this has helped. Uh, we'll do some others in a minute looking at uh, other formatting and using uh, Excel Highlighter.